Um, this is a chart and you can see a lot of lines and I'm sorry if they're really confusing right now, but I want to make sure you understand that I was trading this way back. Um, I started trading this a long time ago, as you can see uh, on the upside and on the downside. But as you can see here, the biggest thing here um, for me um, is I shorted slash had puts on this trade and um, I will be showing you and I guess I'll go ahead and tell you, you know, there was a over 200 percent trade. But this is how you make the 200 percent trade. I think that's the biggest thing is understanding why, you know, someone makes 200, 400, 200, 40 percent or even 10 percent. Or even if they're losing, you want to understand why, what's going on? What is the purpose behind their trading? Why are they making this type of trade and what has made them, you know, either good or bad? Um, in this in this level so this is what it was so if you can see here um from march i think it's the eighth is this the no it's the 25th i don't know why i got the eighth but from there there's been 13 you know you can count them 13 up days one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen green days in a row and after those 13 green days in a row we had a huge um pool for the first time now it didn't go all the way down here but it was a huge pool um considering the fact that 13 straight days were green and now since 13 straight days were green and you get up to another level um where you know i'm seeing this action because this is what you see you don't get a chance to see this at first so you see this and you see that it doesn't hold all right and it starts to pull back right you you may not know much um about it but i had this level drawn out saying okay maybe it's going to retest this level because it broke out this level and since this level is the level that broke out um past you know all you have to do is look left i live by the philosophy of looking left because you can see so many key points you can see so many key uh areas on the chart and when you see those key areas on the chart they can help make your transition into a trade a lot more smoother and a lot uh more proficient um so it just makes it easier and so as i saw this level just traded like butter and broke out that level well you see that it had a tough time holding this level uh you know it, it well it had a tough time um breaking on a stand out towards that level and it retested that breakout level now once you see it start to break and push towards this level and it fails and fades and now the second time it comes to this level there are some things that you need to look at. And that's what I saw when I was actually looking at trading this vehicle. It was simple. You know, I saw a few things. One, the volume drop. The volume, volume, volume is a big move and it's a big part of what's going on here. The volume here is showing you simply that it cannot hold. Because if you look over here, over on this day when it hit 342, and if you don't know uh, much, the highs over here, um, so that's what I'm talking about. Uh, if you look at the high over here, you see three, you know, it went to 342. Um, and then if you look at the bottom left corner right here, you'll see the volume where it says 40.8 million. Um, basically 41 million shares were traded and it couldn't, it still couldn't pop over this. And so with the huge slam that it had and when it retests, first thing I'm going to look for is what? Volume. You're right. I'm going to look for the volume. And I'm going to look and see if there's enough volume to stay over this level, right? So when I'm looking at that volume, because volume equates to amount of shares traded within a day. And if the amount of shares traded in a day are not uh, sequential enough or uh, more than enough to actually push past a certain level, I want to play puts because I don't believe that it's going to hold you know over that 342 23 level and as you can see on this day it actually got a uh 340 it actually got over that level but it couldn't hold or sustain so most stocks um when it does come to this when they're near that high when they're near that level they break out they may break out but the biggest thing here is that they don't hold and when you see something is not holding you want to start to enter based on the fact that it's not holding. And so I had a two week swing trade on this um, from this day. And if you look at the last video I had, I did enter in right near the top, which was, I mean, a killer trade, which started on this day. It wasn't on this day. It was on this day where I got in around 341.78. 
Now you could say, yeah, you were, you know, off by a dollar a share, which to me was simply fine. I was fine with that because I knew the high on this day was 342.23 and I knew the volume had dried up. So I actually got out, like I said, half, half of my position. I got out on the big, when it dropped big, and then when it came back, you know, on the next day when it came down, I covered half of my position. And you'll see why, because bounces, bounces matter, especially when you're trading options. Um, when you're doing puts or loans, bounces and drops matter. So for me, puts right now, they matter. Um, and I'm going to explain each and every level, which is going to be crucial for you guys understanding what actually went on with my thoughts. So the first time, you know, like I said, when it actually got up to this day and I wanted to add into their position because I saw the volume was so far off from um, making that 40 million shares in my mind, you know, right around um, 10 or 11, I used um, my mind to just say, okay, if half a day traded X amount, let's say it was uh, 16 million shares, right? 16 or 17 million shares. Let's, um, for the sake of uh, this day, it was around 17.2 million shares during the middle of the day. So I'm looking at that to say, okay, the next half of the day may trade the same amount. And if it does, it'll trade 30, six million shares right so 17 times two two is 34 million 18 times two is 36 million so i'm looking at okay now it is not going to trade the 40 million shares which are you know pivotal for this stock uh you know again the 40 million share or 41 million shares um couldn't even break through that 42 and stay stable over it so i'm not looking for 36 or less to stay uh, stable or over it. So that was my entry thought process. And the way I entered wasn't on the daily chart, but the way I got my thesis was on the daily chart. So anytime I get a thesis on a trade like this, on a stock like this, um, which means a large cap stock, I'm looking for a daily chart um, thesis. Now with the daily chart thesis, what next comes a, um, what next follows is an entry and the way I enter isn't through the daily it's through the intraday chart so if you look through the past um, let's say I want to say five days maybe yeah five days ago so you, you're looking at the last five days I re-entered this trade easily on pops every pop was a re another another level of entry another level of entry because I wasn't oversized remember I, I told you I actually got out half of my size and so it, that's pretty generous I think I got over over a little bit over half but it's because you know I was already up on a position the position was working but it gave me a bigger drop sooner than I thought so I paid myself I think I was up 40 50 percent on the Nasdaq and you know that's that's really not um, cheap when it comes down to the Nasdaq the Nasdaq is you know sometimes I, I make 10 20 percent um and i lose maybe four five to seven percent um at most eight percent on trades um on a nasdaq i think most of the time i make about 20 ish 17 to 20 ish percent depending on you know it, it all is all relevant to how you trade the stock whether it's a swing trade or whether it's a um out of the money or in the money trade or also a is it a weekly trade or is it a two week trade or is it three weeks away or four weeks away? You know, those things play a part. So when I do usually play those swings, I usually do get a good chance to make about uh, eight to 12 percent. So when I was up, you know, about 50 percent, I think it was like 45 percent um, on the trade. I wanted to take it. And um, so I, I took half and I reentered not when it blew through 4288. Um, I'll show you exactly where I re-entered it. Let's just look at this day. So the moment on it hit 930, I'm on a different time zone here. So the moment it hit over 930, um, you can see the volume came in strong. And you don't know which way it's going to go. But you do see, you know, during pre-market, this was a high level. So you want to see it, first of all, not sustain over this level. So it will push. And as it pushed, um, guess what? You know, I wanted to see, as you can see, I had line drawn all through this for a long time. And it's simply because this level was a key level and it mattered most. And so since this level mattered most, 
what I did was I allowed it to test. And as this level tested, I let it go over and under this level. Um, and once I saw usually this big drop, and then I saw you know this level testing over and under again, I wanted to get a position where you know it was over and undering, over and undering, and snap. So the moment it snapped, pretty much here is where you know I started to build a position right around this 4188-ish level. Um, remember, I started uh, trading around the 4170-ish level. Um, so I, I really didn't do too much more than that. You know, I, I, as soon as it tested this last time, I got a few more shares in, a few more trades in, a few more uh, puts in um, as well. Uh, I traded this both sides because it allows you to, when you're trading a stock um, in options, it allows you to say, okay, I know that this has, you know, some leverage and volatility behind it. So I want to pay myself when it does start to make a collapse move. So as you can see, there are different levels where I did do that and where I actually looked at one, where, where's my entry? So we're dealing with that now. My entry was near this line of 342 because it could not hold that level. It had less volume. It didn't have as much volume as it did. Um, going back on the daily chart, as we saw um, back here on this day, you know, it had 40 million shares of volume. And on this day, it had, you know, 37 million shares of volume, um, which means in my mind, it's not, you know, if 41 million shares couldn't do it, uh, certainly not 30 something million shares can do it. Um, so as you can see that now when we go back to the regular chart, I want to show you, like, again, my entry was based on this day where you know it went over the 342 level but it couldn't hold it got in you know scaled in scaled in which means i i generously poured in according to when it uh showed me i was right and so as it showed me i was right i would risk this level this was my level of risk um so for more people that think that i have a huge risk level that's not the case the risk is not the same so if i put uh, a two hundred thousand um, dollar put position in is not because I'm risking two hundred thousand. It's because I'm risking off of resistance level, or and I believe that that level will hold. And the same thing with somebody with two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars to their name. It's the same way, you know. As I traded before, I used to only make about two hundred um, to a thousand dollars a day um, because I had a smaller account. But the same trades. So these trades they all add up, and so. As it, you know, pull here, I end up covering about half my position because if you look left, you'll see that this, this, ah, sorry guys. So if you look left, right here is why, this is why I covered it, the 339 is level. And it's simply because I had a huge size position here, covered about half of it here because look at the big drop. From 342 uh, base through 4172, all the way to you know a book a share or two dollars a share, I want to cover into that drop, um, and I want to add into add into any um, not dips. I want to add into any spikes. So every time it dipped, you know I I didn't even cover here. Um, what I did was I waited for a bounce, and I wanted it to bounce right into a resistance level. If you look here, I drew a level. A long time ago, <laughs> uh, if I extend it to the right, you'll actually see that this was a perfect level to add into. Not because it spiked uh, a lot. That's not how I look at it. I looked at it spiked into a resistance level. If you look left, you'll see that there was some resistance here as it bounced to this level before and had problems. And even when it went over and under this level, guess what? It came back and it showed itself to be a heavy level. So it got heavy this level. I added pulls. And you know, I added actually in here. So most of these are where I added and I got out. So I added in this level and you know, I just kept adding into pull into uh into these resistance levels because the resistance level is where I was I was looking to, you know, trade the stock from. And so now I'm not risking this level. I would be risking this level because I've added so much into, you know, these levels um, and looking for a fail follow through that 
uh, this level would not be as feasible as this level would be for cutting a loss if that would happen. Um, which again is only relevant because 339 and I'm risking what a buck a share and I'm looking at possibly my thought process was um, to be honest with you it it wasn't just 327s altogether it was this level here the 331 level which I thought you know we would at least retest and um, so when I woke up this morning I'm glad I woke up um, and when I woke up I saw I you know I saw a test in that level and when I saw a test that level you know it didn't look it didn't look very strong right it didn't look like um, it would hold that level you know as we already 8 30 this morning it was easy for me to say okay um all right it's pulling there's heavy pulls heavy pulls and the level that i was looking for to cover into was here and once i started to saw it you know it wasn't it wouldn't bounce you know i partially paid myself 10 percent um of my total my total position and i would let I would let it ride and now most of my position I got out right here so I didn't even last to 326 most of my position was out right here so I was out about 90% of my trade um, heavily here um, simply because it started to look like it was going to bottom um, but the same way a stock usually goes up it usually comes down and so I had 10% left to pretty much allow it to uh, fail and fade off and that's what I allowed it to do. And right here is where I covered my final 10% of my trades, which it started to look a little toppy again. I mean, not toppy, but bottomy again as it tried to bottom here. And it just looked heavy, um, which means it looked as if the volume was for um, the seller. And so I was, as it was favoring the seller, so was I, you know, and I got out near this level, which you can see is also another key level on the chart. If we go back on a 20 day chart, I'm pretty sure you'll see that this level, eh, maybe not even 20 day. Let's look at a time frame. I like looking at different time frames, but if you look at 30 day chart, um, maybe you'll end up seeing that this level was pivotal. As you can see, it was the breakout level uh, pretty much right around here. <clears throat> and I don't look I don't like what I don't like it was a previous breakout level I don't like to try to uh, hold all the way to that breakout level because you know sometimes it bounces before it comes you know a little bit under it and I didn't want to have to deal with that I just wanted to get out my final 10% of my trade um, near the bottom um, so I added into what you see is a I call it a roof right Anytime you jump into a roof and you hit your head on that roof, you're going to come immediately back down. Um, and it trampolined for a little while because people saw how great it went up, but they didn't understand, you know, just the way the same, the way the same stock goes up over and over is the same way it can go down. And as it goes down, you start to see, um, you start to see what a stock is capable of on both sides of the chart. So, um, now I think I've covered, like I said, the first three or four, my, I've covered why I entered, I've covered where I entered and why was the entry important. And I told you guys what each of these levels meant so far. Um, and what guided my decision was the simple fact of the volume fade and two, we couldn't get over certain levels. So every time we hit certain levels, you know, the stock would reject. So this level here was a reject a reject area, right? So this 340 level stayed heavy, stayed heavy, and the third time it stayed heavy, it snapped. So that's what guided me on my entry and pretty much um, next was my exit, number four. The exit I took and why. So I told you guys each exit I took. Um, I told you how I took uh, a small, very small portion here, but I... Um, I told you how really I got in my entries this day, this day, um, and I just accumulated more and more um, near this level. And as it gave me this first big pop on that first day, I got out most of my shares here. Um, and then I waited for a bounce, added into this 340 level because I thought that level would be a strong resistance level than any other level that we've seen on the chart um, because it, 
clearly couldn't break out and the volume was not on the side. So as I was adding the pops here and I added in the pops here, you know, we finally got the big down day and this 331 level was around my level where I wanted to start to cover some. Um, so as it snapped under it, I covered, remember I told you I covered half of my position and then when it got to this 329 level, I covered 90% of my position and I just got out not too long ago, right around 327. While it's not dead bottom, you know, it's still a really good position on the chart where you can say, okay, <clears throat> this was a nice entry. It was a great trade. Um, I'll be posting a trade um, in a second. I'll be posting a trade and I want you guys to watch this video if you don't understand why I made over 200% on that trade, right? So 200% um, doesn't happen all the time, more like 30, 40%, depending on, you know, I don't like choppy trades, so I'm looking for 20% or more trades. And I look to cut, you know, anywhere from really 8% because I want a good entry. I want uh, anywhere from 8% to 6%. That's why I'm looking for 8 to 6%. And that's usually how it plays out, um, simply because the fact of um, we're messing with leverage. If it wasn't leverage, it would be uh, in a regular trade, you know, it would be different. You know, the, that risk would be cut like in half. Um, so I like to trade size, but you don't have to trade size. Um, you can trade whatever level of comfortability or... Um, money that you have that allows you to, you know, be successful. I think the biggest thing is I've been doing this for four and a half, five years. That makes me seem uh, more aggressive simply because I know how I feel like I always can make that money. No matter what, no matter if I lose 8%, um, you know, as much as I've lost, I think the highest I've lost is 12% um, when I'm actually trading the stock. And that's simply because, um, you know, it may have moved a little too fast. Entry was a little bit bad, but the biggest thing is I believe I always can come back because I know how to trade stocks. And I believe that the moment you learn how to trade, it's easier for your mindset to say money is easy to get. Um, there's never a rush. There's never a push to say, all right, I need to make money today. Um, my thought process behind this, um, if you're just now coming in and you haven't seen anything, I really, really hope that you watch this video from front to end because I gave a very, very detailed analysis of what I believe uh, happened to this stock and what I've been saying for the last, you know, pretty much, uh, I don't know, a last week and a half um, about how the QQQ pretty much couldn't sustain the volume, how it couldn't grow past that volume level at the 341s and how that, that push was very, very hard to... Um, to have, uh, but again, um, that's why I'm so, I say I am successful, and that's simply due to the fact that I really have trained and worked very hard at it, and I hope you guys do the same with anything, you know, I think, I believe everybody has a purpose, and yeah, so that purpose will push you, you know, that purpose will push you to to do what you need to do, get the skill set so you can be, you know, great for your friends, your family, and uh, for everyone around you, your community, and your nation. And uh, that's how I see it. You know, you'll do a service to your community, you'll do a service to your family, you'll do a service to your 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 nation, your state, and your nation, and around the world when you allow yourself to, you know, grow in, in all these areas and, you know, just be great. Um, so that's what we have. And... Sorry, I don't think I took too much time. Uh, thank you so much again for uh, the opportunity, and I love to do it. And uh, so, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully, you guys watch this and. and